today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Metacom Toys Batman Hush Real Action Heroes, the 12 inch Catwoman. Catwoman's been a figure I've been eyeing for a while through online. I've been checking some online stores. Always wanted to pick up the figure and just ultimately never did. And then sure enough, I went to my local comic book store and they had her. And I thought to myself, you know what? This is a sign. This is a sign that Spot should pick this up. It is come, it comes to us from the folks over at Metacom Toys. Uh, also the same makers that released the Batman as well as the Superman Hush figures. Package-wise, we have kind of a halved middle section here featuring Catwoman, and that is the picture of the figure itself, as well as we have the figure down below holding her whip in hand. It's been around the side of the box. We've got Catwoman with her goggles on there. Now, the goggles are also removable, so, you know, depending on how you want to have her displayed, I'll, I'll show you when we get her out of packaging. And speaking of, there she is right there without her goggles. This comes with from the Real Action Heroes line uh, from Metacom Toys. You can also get the Harley Quinn, which is also from Batman Hush, which I haven't, haven't seen yet, but I would be tempted to pick her up. To check out more from the folks over at Metacom, you can go to www.metacomtoy.co.jp. Just before, just before Spot actually opens this, I want to show you one other thing that the Catwoman does have. Of course, the price tag at the top there. But you have uh, a nice image here of Batman and Catwoman side by side. It says Selena Kyle, a phantom thief, uh, thief who appears in Gotham City, briefly works together with Batman and his romantic relation and has a romantic relationship, wears black leather suit and goggles. Spot's going to take a break and get this opened up. When we come back, though, we're going to get a better look at the Metacom Toys Batman Hush Real Action Figures 12 inch Catwoman. It's more heading your way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Just before we have a look at Catwoman, we'll look at the clear display stand that comes with the figure. Now, currently, she comes with a circular display stand. She comes with the clear posts, and then she comes with a series of waist clips. I just haven't added them on there yet, but there's ones of varying sizes, depending on how, uh, you know, whereabouts you want to peg her into place. You can peg her closer to the torso, closer to the waist. She has different pegs or different clips depending on your uh, what purpose you want to use for the stand. So if you just slide that down you can screw and tighten the uh, the actual screw at the back there just to make sure that the waist clip doesn't move around. But I mean you don't really need to even tighten it. It does a pretty good job of staying in place and then you can attach that to back of Catwoman. There's nothing overly complicated. It's in fact a rather simplistic display stand in its nature just because it's clear it's the same display stand that also came included with Batman. So we'll just move that out of the way. Okay, so let's have a look at the figure. And I've really been excited to get this figure in hand. In hand, literally in hand. She actually isn't, she isn't disappointing. Uh, Batman I found, and I haven't had a chance to look at the uh, Superman. I've also picked up Superman. We'll look at him in a separate video. I haven't had a chance to really get a hands-on feel for the Superman costume yet. But I know that the Batman costume gave me a little bit of a worry, especially the areas down below here with the stitching. Catwoman doesn't seem to have that problem. I mean, of course, I'd still be cautious to spreading the legs as, you know, too much because you don't want to add a lot of stress and, and cause that seam or anything to rip. She's got an interesting backside, uh, backside, so to speak. It does feel like there's something extra that's been added to the junk, so to speak, of Catwoman. It, the back of her looks a little wonky, to be honest, but I'm probably not... Obviously, I'm not going to be displaying her from the back anyways. Uh, judging her solely from the front, I think she's a pretty good-looking figure for a, for, you know, a 12-inch figure. Let's, let's have a look at her face. The face is pretty good. I don't really have any issues with the face. In fact, I, I almost kind of feel like the face is just a little bit better, maybe just a little bit better than this, the Sideshow Collectibles six scale release of Catwoman, which something was a little off on those eyes. I mean, it's not a perfect face sculpt by, you know, at all, because 
Like the eyebrows seem a little on the weird side. I think that's the jarring end of it that throws me off of the face. But I, I like the face. I like that the ears are sculpted in there so it looks like it's a stretched over leather over to her ear, you know, a cowl that she's wearing. She got very, very small Catwoman ears as well. She's got a pretty face, if not for just being a little crazy with the eyebrows. But overall, I, I like the face quite a lot. The dark red lipstick is a nice touch. She's got very piercing green eyes. She does do very well looking like a pretty Catwoman figure. What also might come across as a little barren on this figure too is the fact that she doesn't have her goggles. And she does come with goggles. She comes with these uh, silver plastic goggles with a little translucent blue on the eyes. Uh, this is not the thickest of materials, so I would say be very careful putting this onto the Catwoman, but she does look like she needs something. And it's maybe just because looking at that style of design for Catwoman, you know she's going to have goggles. Not having them, she does look like she's missing something. To put the goggles on, um, you have to be careful. You do have to be careful. Not so much that they're fragile, but you have to be careful that through the process of putting stress on them, you don't want the... Well, I guess it is related to being them fragile. You don't want to add a lot of stress to the back there. To get them over her eyes, you're basically going to put them on two different angles. To put them at the top of her cowl, you basically want the strap to be angled down. And then from there, be very careful, of course, you can bring the goggles down to whatever you know whatever so, you know whatever space above her eyes you want them to be obviously the more you push them down they're going to add a little more stress to the back there so again be very careful but you're going to get them brought down i probably will keep them to about there i think that's i think that's a good look for her if you want if you're the type that prefers catwoman to have the goggles completely over her eyes well you don't want to keep pushing down that's not going to get anywhere because you're also going to be stopping at the ear point. So what you need to do, take the goggles back off. There we go. Try not to drop the goggles either. There we go. Spot. And what you want to do is put them on this angle. So I had this going okay before. There we go. Put it on like it's going to be flat. And then you want to push the goggles further down. And you want to keep this higher up. And then once you've got the goggles in a good enough place, you can then start bringing these down. You don't get a lot of clearance. That's the thing. Like as you get progressively further down the back of her head, uh, you can feel that there's resistance. I would say stop there. When you stop, when you hit that resistance, leave it be. I must say even though like goggles down, looks just as good as well. I mean, I probably will again display the goggles up, but either war either look works well for the figure. With the rest of her body, she's wearing basically she's wearing rubber from the top where she has a zipper. You can bring this down, although I'm not I'm iffy whenever it comes to six scale figure zippers like that zipper being caught or snagging or coming loose from itself then you're in a world of hurt my friends but she does have a zipper that can come down um, head to toe she is sporting a black leather or rubber outfit if you will she's got uh, the almost three quarters almost full forearm length gloves with the hands being removable i'll show you that in a second and then she's also got the boots. Now, I don't recall the boots having buckles on the bottoms of them, but I'm assuming that they did. It looks a little jarring having the buckles there. It kind of makes her look like a pilgrim. But it's a look I can get over for the fact that the rest of the figure looks as good as it does. Just don't look at the back of it. She has an accessory. She has a whip. The whip does not have any sort of posability to it. I guess if you wanted to, you could probably maybe heat this stretch it a little bit and cool it down if you want to get a little extra length out of the whip you ask yourself well hey wait a minute spot how can she hold a whip if she's already got the whip wrapped around her waist well she does have the the whip wrapped around her waist that is a true point but what you could do is medicom has it where you can detach 
like that, and I didn't rip it, that's just the Velcro underneath, you can detach the belt all together and you can take it off. And then that way, if she's holding her whip, it obviously makes no sense that she's got the whip still around her waist. Now, if this big barren area where the buckle used to be, they give you an extra buckle. But buckle also has Velcro on it. So just peg that in like that. And then you can display Catwoman with the whip. Either work well. The wrapped around whip, however, does fill in some of the areas that end up looking a little... Eh, like she's a little uh, anorexic, I'm afraid. Like she, you can see big sunken in areas where her legs attach themselves because the legs really attach themselves further up. She doesn't really have so much of a, of a waist as she has basically a torso and then legs attached to them. So for that reason, you might want to always keep this on even if you're displaying her with the whip. I would keep it on just to kind of help fill in some of that area there. Uh, she does also come, other accessories wise, she also comes with a ton of different hands. Uh, currently she is sporting some gloved, clawing, meow hands, but she also has a pair of kind of uh, open palms, kind of directing out palms, a couple of partially closed fists, ideal for holding the whip, and she also has a couple of uh, closed fists as well. Uh, pegging any of those out simply just slide it out and through sliding it out you might also find that the glove top of the glove slides out too you just want to hold the glove pull the hand out and then you're good to go and find the glove or find the hand that you want to attach it to and replace it out and then you can have her displayed with the whip now this next part of the review I'm gonna keep in I mean normally well it's something that unfortunately now has broken, but I'm gonna keep it in this video because I just wanna to touch, to touch a point on the whip itself. If I show you the hand that she comes included with, let's find, oh, let's find this one right here. Now she has two closed fists. She has two partially kind of fanning out hands, and then she's got the clawed hands. The whip, I guess theoretically you could have just hanging out from her hand like so, but if you wanted to, because I mean, after all, the hands are partially closed. There is another example right there, it's partially closed. That you would think it should have her be able to hold the whip. Well, the problem is that the hand is almost solid plastic. There is no give to the fingers whatsoever. So Spot, in his infinite wisdom, thought I could just simply pop the, the whip off or it seemed to like want to screw off. Well, I wasn't actually screwing it. I was actually breaking the whip. I twisted it right off and sure enough, it came off all right, but it came off in a manner that I wasn't all that happy with. If I can just show you again the hand, look at the base of the whip. The hand itself, sure, you could fit it from underneath the hand, but in order for you to accommodate that, keeping in mind, that the whip cannot be separated from itself. I suppose you could have brought the whip through the hand until you got to the handle. Maybe that was the reasoning for it. Maybe that's the way you were supposed to feed the whip through. But unfortunately, there's no instructions. So ultimately, you know, I guess I could. No, I guess I can't. I was gonna say, I guess I could have it where the whip is just attached. I guess I could do it like that, or ultimately I'll just glue it together. But unless you feed the whip through, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to keep this part into the video, unless you, you feed the whip through, it's almost next to, well, it is impossible. You can't get the whip through her hand. You, you, you can't. You know, you, keeping in mind, there's gonna be a whip here. There's no real place, no way to get it into her hand. Prying the fingers you think would be a solution. Unless you heat the fingers and spread them out, that might be the only other alternative. Or like Spotted already mentioned, feed the whip from the bottom until it gets finally to the handle and then just obviously stop. Gluing it, I'll just simply glue it back in place. Some crazy glue, it'll be good as new. But I did wanna show you guys, that's the one other issue I have with this figure. There's no way to actually include the whip to her hand without doing this or without having to feed the whip from the bottom up. So 
be careful when it comes to this. When it comes to Catwoman's articulation, she's fairly articulated for uh, you know for a Metacom six, uh, 12 inch figure. She does have the ball joint in the top of the head, so lots of motion there, no issues whatsoever. Hinges on the shoulders, and they don't seem as restricted as Batman's were. Uh, I fe felt like Batman's was a little more hindered by moving. Now granted, that be the case, don't move it too much. You can again start adding stress to those seams. Before you know it, you might actually rip the costume, so be a little careful with that. A good range of motion in her elbows, articulation in her hands. Articulation on the top of her torso crunch. She does have what appears to be a slight swivel in the waist. I get a little if iffy when it comes to stuff underneath fabric because you never can quite tell where joints reside. Legs go out, forward, being careful, back. She has a, what appears to be a top swivel cut in the thigh area, double hinge knee. And she would have articulation in the ankles, but the plastic on her boots is so thick and so dense that you're probably not going to be able to do much with them. As a whole, I like the figure. In fact, I think the more I look at the figure, the more it's growing on me. I just sucks, I have to admit. Sucks the, the idea of the whip. I wish my current self so could have jumped back in time and told my past self, uh, don't try to screw the whip. Don't try to take this off because it won't come off, my friend. It will ultimately just break. That being, you know, that looking at that aside, the rest of the figure I think is pretty good. Face is pretty. I think it's almost even better than the Sideshow Collectibles figure. Although this is much more uh, comic looky, whereas the other one looked a little more realistic, not by much. But this one definitely has a more rooted comic feel. But the figure is good. I have no issues with the figure. Proportions, she looks a little bit better in proportion than the Batman and the Superman. Which, proportionate-wise, remember if they had, you remember they had big broad shoulders, very long thighs. We'll have a look at Superman in an upcoming video. If you can find this figure, I think it's worth it. I think if, especially if you like a Catwoman figure to add to your collection. Today's collectible spot, we were having a look at the Metacom Toys Real Action Heroes, the Batman Hush 12-inch Catwoman. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.